I've always been an advocate for digital in the past. Film is dead. No way we're not doing film. It's just too little control. One thing led to another and I thought, oh, might as well just do photography and film most of the time now. I suppose what a camera does is it slows you down and makes you focus on the little things and the normal things. The main reason I really enjoy photography is kind of like the, the journey that accompanies it. Through taking photos, I went to places that I would never normally have gone. People don't know what they're getting themselves into. Damn, I wasted so much time doing this. <laughs> I started shooting film mostly just because I loved like the intention behind it. I suppose it's kind of like getting a takeout versus, you know, actually preparing for a good meal, putting in that effort. It's more about the experience instead of the product. I feel like with a film camera, you're involved so much more in the production of that image. Just being able to like hold your negatives and, and know that that's like a moment in time that you can have forever. Whereas digital, they just kind of get lost. Because you can't see the photo straight away, it's like so much anticipation and then you get it back and it's like so rewarding. Our generation has been really dislocated from that, that process. The very tangible way in which like, the film is taking a photo, holding the photo, there's something like kind of romantic in that, I guess. I think it's really impressive. <laughs> Kodak and I announced like higher prices because they can't keep up the demand and that kind of thing. It's, just, it's pretty cool. Maybe the generation is kind of tired of the digital age. There, it's, there's some odd feeling when you actually get to look at your negatives or the film itself once it's been de developed. It feels quite surreal in the sense that you know that this moment is captured in a physical form. You can touch it, you can even smell it if you want, but digital doesn't give that to you. It's not permanent. You, if you throw your hard drive on the floor, that's it. The film, well, if you burn it or if you submerge it with water, maybe that's going to damage it but otherwise it's basically gonna be there forever. So I guess it's the sense of physicality that's been something we've been longing for a bit. A lot of the community has gotten really techie about film photography. It is a lot about the cameras and people like collecting cameras. So I started out with my uh, like a three, which was a really good camera, and it was kind of it wasn't beat up, but it did seen a fair bit of use through its sort of 60, 60 years history. Yeah. So I got into a, I bought a Hasselblad five hundred C, which is basically the cheapest, and I got a Yashica Mat one twenty four G. Really nice camera, but uh, at the same time got a. It's a Sorky 4K, uh, which is <laughs> it's kind of a uh, it's a bit of a niche camera. It's a Soviet era uh, Russian built camera. Actually, maybe it's Ukrainian. I think it's built in Ukraine. Anyway, I placed my 500C, my Hasselblad, original Hasselblad, with a 501C on my camera. <laughs> I have a Mamiya 6, um, so not the old Mamiya 6, the folding cameras. Um, it's kind of like an edge. You just can't stop. Those cameras, they're from, you know, 30, 40 years ago, but they're built so well. Uh, and the industrial design and everything, everything is just so perfect. They stood the test of time, but ultimately I think that's camera or a lens is just a, it's just a tool, right? I mean, it might gives you a bit of um, satisfaction when you're holding it and somehow makes you feel better. But ultimately I think uh, it's just a tool to help you get the nice picture. There's also, a creative aspect to it. Um, I mean, we saw the movement of filters on Instagram, which, if you didn't know, those are mostly based on film stocks. They're based on Fuji and Kodak film stocks from the 70s and 80s, mostly. The look that they had um, and those created are just transferred digitally onto Instagram, and people used those a bunch, even though they didn't know where they, where they came from. People want that aesthetic, something that's different from taking a picture on your iPhone something that isn't going to be HDR and perfectly realistic colors, something that's going to distort the color slightly and maybe give you a weird 
yellow look to your images or give you a nice green cast like some of the Fuji film does. Um, I think that's definitely important um, as well as the the really techy side that some some of us are getting into. I go back to the Fuji film Superior Four Hundred or extra superior 400 that's like a, a just a color film the tone of the colors on that i really like because i like quite bright like colorful photos generally i love black and white i think black and white is just like nostalgic like i love the feeling of a black and white photo i like shooting portraits in black and white a lot because i feel like the best part of a portrait is someone's eyes and when there isn't like all that color sort of distracting from the image you can really see someone's face yeah i do i do mostly shoot uh, black and white and the film stock that I like the most is probably the Kodak Tri-X 400. It's kind of a really strong, grainy, smoky kind of film. And I like to push it to uh, probably one or two stops. It's kind of hard to justify uh, exactly what reasons are behind that. But the, the effect that I get from it is just really pleasing to the eye for me. It somehow goes pretty well with what you feel in Edinburgh. It's pretty historic town. Um, I, I just think that works pretty well for me. Uh, what I find difficult is you can't, obviously you can't look at what you've done like straight away. So you can be shooting the whole day and you can realize that like you've had some weird thing pressed wrong or like, or like you have your finger over the, the lens or like the lens cap on and like stupid stuff like that. And it's really irritating because you, you pay the money to get developed and then you're like, oh, that whole roll is pretty bad. <laughs> but um, I feel like that in, ends up being a good thing because you kind of have to learn those lessons to get better. You're really thinking about every single shot you're taking. So it means you're not just sort of going around like snapping like a, like a thousand pics in one go, like you're actually thinking about every single shot. Yeah, I think people are scared of film because it's easier to mess up. Like before you know what you're doing, you're just like hoping that you get a good result. It's amazing waiting for your film to come back, but to wait that long and then get like a crappy rollback if you don't know what you're doing is gonna like totally put you off using a film camera, I think. One thing that got a lot of young people into photography is Instagram. I still go on to Instagram, uh, mostly to look at uh, other photographers for inspirations because there's so many of them. But the reason I haven't posted so much on Instagram is uh, I think firstly, it's so small when you look at it on your on your phone, it just looks different. The way you, we, we look at photos on phones probably prefers certain type of images than others. Like if you do something like a landscape photography and you really need a big frame to appreciate that, you just can't get that on Instagram. Uh, and then once I stopped posting my stuff on Instagram, uh, I actually printed out some of my works, uh, gave them out to friends, family. People don't do it anymore. Uh, you get thousands of uh, pictures on your phone, but you don't really appreciate any of them. I mean, I, I suppose it's just a, a good way to make people appreciate uh, photos again, and probably more importantly, the people in those photos, the relationships, the experiences in those photos. That's one of the reasons I, I stopped posting. Uh, the other one is probably um, you just can't be the algorithm. I mean, I, I want to say that I don't sort of value my personal worth with sort of likes and, and and other people's opinions but it's really hard to do that who cares if you get 50 likes or 200,000 likes in the end it's not going to change your life especially since i'm not a professional photographer this this isn't my career this is just a hobby this is something for fun so if i'm not having fun why am i continuing to do this so i am basically quit posting anything on Instagram, especially since I have a really pedantic way of arranging my feed. So I thought, okay, I'm not gonna uh, jeopardize my photography just for the sake of having the same color palette for three photos in a row. I thought, no, this is just toxic to how I take pictures in the, in the long run. No, social media weirds me out a little bit. I just feel like um, I also start to compare myself to other people um, with photography. Like I can love something that I produced and post it and then I'll see something kind of similar that I think is better and feel like crappier about something that I was proud of before. So 
I don't know. I like, I kind of stay away from it, but I also love scrolling through for inspiration. And sometimes I'll see something that I think is really beautiful and I'll save it and like try and recreate that or um, imitate that feeling that I got from it. So like, I love it for looking at other people's work, but it makes me feel weird about my own. I do hate, I do hate it a bit. Um, <laughs> and that sounds really snobbish. It's not snobbish, especially after some of the stuff I've said, but I post on Instagram and I think I enjoy some of some aspects of Instagram. For me, it's sort of a path, kind of like a thumbnail uh, in folders on computers. You have little images that you can see a tiny, tiny bit of your image and Instagram sort of works to, to move people to actually see your image. Maybe they open your website and maybe they see it on a larger screen. I think that's, that's where it starts becoming useful. So some people say you shouldn't, um, you shouldn't create stuff that people like, which I think is a really stupid <laughs> saying. Um, but what they mean is you shouldn't let other people influence what you make. You should make what you want to make. I like uh, creating pictures that people want to hang on their wall. That's great. Um, and I don't think Instagram is very different from that concept. I feel like you can take beautiful photos on film, you can take beautiful photos on a digital camera. It's just the experience of, of creating it. Like, I think I just have such an emotional, like, connection to my film because you almost, like, you can almost remember each shot that you took. You know, you didn't just pull out your phone for a reason. It was like, oh, I want this on film, on this camera. You know, when you're shooting digital, you can click, 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 click until you feel like you might've gotten something, scroll through 50 images and find one that's good. So just, it's not as special because there's more of them. I wouldn't say it makes me more creative. I'd say it gives me a different set of tools to be creative with. With digital, I was so much in control that I kind of got bored of it in the sense that even if I knew that the shot won't be perfect the moment I take it, I can go into Lightroom, adjust everything the way I want it to be. The film, there's a bit more responsibility when you're shooting. It kind of brings out a new way how you look into things. You actually consider what you consider a good um, subject. With digital, you can just you know, point and shoot and pick your favorite of the film. It's a bit more personal, I'd say. It makes the photo taking process way more interesting because before with like my phone or digital, you're just kind of like snapping. Whereas now like, I was really thinking about what went into making the seat, like the shot good or bad. Uh, everything is a conscious decision. There's only a limited number of photos that you're gonna get. It's just once. Uh, if you miss it, it's gone. Because it's so easy to, to bring up, take up your phone and talk, take a really nice 12 megapixel picture and throw it online, it's, it's, it's really easy. Uh, but when you do do that film, especially if you develop it yourself, especially if you start printing stuff, I spent eight hours in the darkroom on last Friday and printed three pictures. <laughs> um, and one of them I wasn't quite happy with, so I'm going to go back and reprint it. When I, for some reason, very seldomly these days, bring out a digital camera and make something on it, 15 minutes to edit them, maybe I come back, have a coffee break and edit them again because I wasn't quite happy. But maybe I've spent half an hour in total on that photo and then I'm sort of done. And that doesn't really satisfy me. I, I enjoy having developed a film, taken a film first of all, I mean, I shot 12 pictures in three hours last Thursday, <laughs> going through that, developing it, hanging it, drying it, maybe you can see a few shots on the film, and a process of constantly seeing progression on your image, going from nothing to a large print. It's very satisfying. There are ways of doing that in digital. You can print huge prints that are look really good, and maybe people would be more satisfied with their work on digital if they did that. Uh, but there is a large, there is a solid culture of not really printing from digital and not really having a process with your photo. You're going to go through and churn around on this one photo. Uh, you sort of get it out the door and that's, and that's it. Essentially, you have quite a lot of money and time invested in that one photo. Better make it good.